Howdy folks, my name is Lance 90 and welcome back to Let's Play Major Minor. Enveloped in a flash of white light, much like when Nami spun the gear on her blade, but this is different, we're moving. For a moment, I wonder where he could be taking me. Of course. Of course there's a safe spot right there. I don't think we did anything, did we? He offered me a choice, but then actually didn't give me the option to make a choice. Let me guess. You're home? Yes, and it was beautiful. In an earlier time, in a fit of panic, escapees from the Wayfarer's Tavern hid in the forest. Fearing for their lives, they fight to catch their breath. KB, you need to calm down right now. We did everything we could. It's a miracle that we survived. Don't you dare tell me to call down. Do you not see the same thing I did? They killed my brother thanks to you. This wasn't my fault, PB. You didn't see what those two could do. I would have been useless to contest them. Please think about this rationally. I'm upset more than I've ever been. I don't want to add to the body count. It's your job to protect us, though. You've been doing it for years, right? You can't just back down from a fight. Maybe I know this is difficult for you, but we'd all be dead if we fought back. They have power like I've never seen. We need to be thankful that we escaped. Oh, Trish and Kaylin did too, but trust me, Fidget's not done, gone yet. I skewered him right in front of us. They held him, I held him in my arms before we ran away. How can you say he's not gone? He fumes with anger, but this time it's justified. Or what Ryu told us, PP. Lance on 90 has the ability to fix all this. Right now we need to focus on his survival. This will allow us to blow over soon enough, and we'll be able to see everyone again. Not just Fidget, but your mother too. You really believe that, Ryu? Yes, with all my heart. I know that Lance 90 can do this. Kinda wish I hadn't picked Lance 90 for like the serious things. You're lying. You said we need to focus on survival, but then you said death is irrelevant, especially if Lance 90 can reverse it. That's why I don't believe you, and why I think Fidget is really gone. You fear death, and you don't want to die. You don't truly believe in Lanzo 90. You don't truly believe in Ryu's words. There's a part, there's a part of you that knows the truth. Ryu clenches his fist, unsure what to say. You're holding on to a false hope, just like Fidget's been doing for years. I miss him, Ryu. I miss him so much. And it's all your fault. Is it your fault for lying about Riley a long time ago? Phoebe leaps forward towards Ryu, presumably to attack, but instead he cries and hugs his friend. A mountain of tears run down his face. Sorry, I laughed at the idea of a, a rabbit fighting a bear. <laughs> I want him back. Ryu embraces Phoebe and starts to cry as well, shedding his first tears since the Exodus project. This is new. Open my eyes, I'm confused by what I see. It's almost a weird sensation in the back of my mind. For some reason, I think I see Riot and PB. But in front of me is actually a rusty hangar bay. We know what a hangar bay is? If this is like a sci-fi setting? I shake my head in an attempt to glean clarity. After a few moments, I notice Nagi approach me. Riot and PB in some sort of danger? If that was the case, I'm sure Nagi would know. Sorry for the mess, Lance 090. This room doesn't get much use. I promise the rest of the ship is clean. The rest of the ship? What does that mean? This is the Federation. This is my home, the Terminus. A flagship vessel built by the Federation. Seized with force by my own hand. Please follow me, Lance 090. This room doesn't befit our conversation. It's merely an organic landing pad. Curious, like, what exactly is the ability, their abilities if they're able to, like, uh, conquer sci-fi nations with swords? Presumably magic, but we haven't seen exactly what their magic even is. Organic landing pad. Yes, it's able to transfer living beings, even if they are nowhere near the ship. If you can see, as you can see, we don't get much company, so they're transporters. He laughs clearly a jab at his own dilapidated room. Understand it though, he's like he's getting beamed up. He must have transferred, yeah, <laughs> he must have transferred us both from Terra's surface. I think you'll find this place beautiful. First impressions can be a damning thing. I must have thought I was ugly at first. Without even saying so, he starts to leave the room. I have no choice but to follow him without hesitation. I grip my new sword, ready to use that at any time, but when we exit, I know that it truly is beautiful. And it was beautiful. Okay, that was a immediate save after a save player with no decisions. Everything is pristine and glossy and white. Several computer and monitors display incomprehensible data. This technology is so advanced I can barely grasp it. Federation must be eons ahead of Earth and Terra. Staring in awe as I walk toward Nagi. He's walking fast and I don't want to get lost. I have to run to catch up, these strides in. The rides are much longer. Taking you to the bridge, I thought it would be more fitting. No doubt you have lots of questions. I heard what Father told you, but there's a lot more to it than that. 
Stories are already ever one-sided. You turn to a few corners and I do my best to catch up. Nagi's demeanor is extremely different than I knew. I must have some fright within me from our last meeting. Part of me fears what he might he might make a sudden move. I don't blame you, Exodus. Wait, is it okay if I call you that? I think it fits you better, to be honest. Father got to you first, and it's a shame him and his people made a big impression. You're attached to less open-minded. That flashbacks to the first time I visited Terra. Riding and Killa, Indian Conrad got to me. That time I recited with opposite parties. I even thought about this correlation in my mind, but it couldn't be as simple as that. It implies there's no good or evil at play. Nagi attacked the Federation. He admitted this. Stop it all off. He tried to kill me. I have a reason for everything I've done. You sat through Thotter's story, Exodus. I hope you can do the same for mine. We're almost at the bridge. It won't be much longer now. We can end this without any violence. Not sure I trust him as far as I can throw him. Turn a few more corners and I see a large door. It's likely the entrance to the bridge of a ship. Nagi keeps walking and opens it upon his approach. I quickly enter after him, hoping it doesn't close. And one thing for sure, this is where it ended. Reach the point of no return. You will no longer have the ability to save. Many scenes will start playing out of sequence. Start playing out in sequence. Ensure you have enough time to watch the finale. Okay. As soon as I enter, I see Nagi standing at the terminal. I don't know what he's doing, but he sure does. His fingers tap away at the touchscreens with expertise. After a moment, the window seems to open. Actually, they fade into transparency. And then welcome to the void of space in absolute black. We're to lift less stars than I expect. It's kind of beautiful, isn't it? This is the edge of your reality plane. You can see outside, but that's it. You don't have the technology to escape, nor the ability to see this far. You're the first Earthling to witness this. All those stars just out of reach. They're the Federation's core worlds, but what you're seeing is only a memory. You're so far away, this isn't accurate. The light is millions of years old. You've long since destroyed those worlds. Honestly, I'm a little conflicted from down here. They look amazing. You can see their flaws up close. If only you could see them like this, I never would have destroyed them. They'd still glisten like this today. Every candle dims into nothingness, and there's also beauty in the darkness, something that most people hate to admit. Raise his hand against the win Raise bleh, rest his hand against the window and snickers. I guess he's overtaken by nostalgia at the sight, but the universe looked light before his onslaught, then a moment later he turns to me and smiles. Wish I could show you that darkness. Light is not as pure as people think. Those worlds shined with indecency. He takes a slow step towards me. I want to ready my blade, but I don't. I sense sorrow and regret in his words. He wasn't going to attack me, I could tell. I hate thinking about the past. It stirs up a rage within my soul. But do you share the same rage as me? We're supposed to create a perfect world, but it wouldn't really be our world. It'd be handed over to the Federation. What would happen to us after that? We're likely discarded, thrown away. We had no purpose other than to listen. At first, we didn't know that. We happily made Earth to be perfect. We believed it was our will to do so. The free will did not exist for us. We were only doing what we were told to do. Even if we didn't know it at the time, we grew curious about our future. That's when we confronted Father. He told us the truth about everything. Washed out in rage, we should have been free to live our lives, but instead he created us as slaves. We didn't deserve to live in peace. That's why he performed our ritual. We cursed the Earth and all manner of its flaws. Death, disease, famine, you name it, you'd slowly watch his mission crumble. His scepter would then would always be out of reach. Now me and myself were able to break free, but we promised that one day we'd return, we'd kill him when his will was broken. That was when we embarked on our own mission, we'd find the leader of the Federation, we'd kill them, breaking all the shackles. They'd never be able to do this again, condemn worlds to their servitude. The reality plane should have been free. Core worlds were the first thing we saw. They are in worse shape than we thought, much more pathetic than Father let on. We touched down on one as soon as we could begin, but we were greeted with uh, violence. It was unfortunate, but we fought back. That's when we found out the truth. Our weapons were plagued as well, likely from the same ritual on Earth. As we killed them, we grew stronger. We could convert life into raw energy. Suddenly, our goal became more realistic. We began transversing all of these worlds, and soon we saw the Federation's true nature. They can barely sustain their own people. The need for new apparent energy was apparent. But none of the planes were successful, the Federation was living its final days. I might think that we're monsters, but the harvesting was a display of mercy. These people were suffering so much. We'd use their energy in a righteous manner by destroying the Federation entirely. No more worlds to suffer because of them. The reason I don't really buy this is... It depends on how old the Federation is here. 
it sounds like they're saying millions of years. Uh, they should be building Dyson Spheres at this point, which would be harvesting all the light energy from a star, which is an obscene amount of energy. There's no way they could be running out of energy. And then even beyond that, they'd have like uh, black hole power and stuff like that. <laughs> That's a whole different conversation. <laughs> As we harvested, we interrogated. We learned where the Federation was run about its leader, the Imperator. We knew where we had to go, the world the Imperator called home. Only there could we end the Federation. We saved it for last Exodus. We wanted the Imperator to suffer too, just like Father would be at the same time. See his Federation fall apart when he lost all the hope, he'd die, then the universe would be truly free. Our journey finally led us to the home world. We were all powerful, completely invincible. Sure enough, this world was a paradise. They weren't suffering like the other worlds. The Imperator obviously did it on purpose, showing that he was able to live happily. We met with him and had a long talk. He stood by his morals to the very end. These experience, experiments were for the greater good. He was civil, which was unexpected. His experiments had led to so much suffering. There was the biggest mass murder in history. Therefore, his end was very fitting. We killed him, but showed him no mercy. He was destroyed by his own experiments. We should have been satisfied, but we weren't. Something else had we had to do. That's when we discovered the Terminus. Federation knew what that they were dying, so they no longer sat around waiting. They built a ship capable of reality travel. We wanted to visit the reality planes rather than waiting for them to break free. We seized the ship without hesitation. That's when we realized what to do next. The Imperator was not the true creator. Something or someone made the Imperator. Federation didn't spawn from nothing. This entire universe was likely created. But what could hold such power? We need to continue our harvest, but now we could visit all the reality planes. We are no longer limited to the core worlds. The power we could gather was infinite, but, and we'd need every bit of it. We'd be breaking out of the universe. Reality planes were nothing to us anymore. The Federation was insignificant. There was an even greater target out there. So we did what we had been doing forever. Started harvesting the reality planes. Our power grew with each successful harvest. And so when Terra piqued our interest, it seemed to be a massive power present. Not only that, it was rapidly growing. The temptation to harvest Terra was huge, but we decided to save it for last as well. We let the power grow for as long as we could. And grow you did, Exodus. Now me and, her, I, and I harvested the universe, but somehow your power rivaled that. It'd definitely be enough to break free. That's when we decided to come to Terra. Now he was driven by our lust to kill Father. And who was I to get in her way? Should she had a desire that was truly her own, she wasn't acting under any influence. So I let her do it, even if she died. The final act would be her own choice. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I promised I would achieve our goal. That's why we destroyed the tavern. There'd be no need of it anymore. So it's symbolic of Father's failure. His hopes to see a connected universe. We had fun raising it to the ground. You're not making a very convincing argument here, dude. That brings us to where we stand, on the cusp of universal revolution. I want to find the All-Creator Exodus, even if I have to travel forever, if there are a million universes getting in the way. What if there is no All-Creator? What if it's just the Big Bang? <laughs> we'll find them and destroy them. Use their power to start over again, a new beginning for all of existence, without the suffering I've witnessed. That's what I was truly made to do. I wasn't perfect. I wasn't meant to make a perfect world, I was meant to make a universe of perfection. You can help me, Exodus. Your power is vast and infinite. You don't need to follow Father's, or father's orders. His dream is less than ideal. The universe would be overpopulated. It would suffer in the exact same way. The overpopulated argument doesn't hold up. You're not Thanos, brother. He'd have you undo all of my harvesting, bring back every world, every life, but that's not such a good thing. They lived a horrifying existence. No. Oh. Some of those people are truly evil. The Emperor was living proof of that. Everything would be connected, sure, but would it truly be harmonious? I don't think that's the case, Exodus. There are worse people than me out there. I don't think so. Father would give them free reign, all in the name of a connected universe. That's why I destroyed the tavern. There's another way to handle this, something that works for both of us. In me, your energy exodus, I'll use it to leave this interview's universe, but I'll close off Earth and Terra. Whatever I do, it won't affect you. These worlds will live just as they always have, but we'll destroy the Ark completely. What about... Like, uh... Like Mars. Is Mars like a... Does that consider Earth? Like, is it the entire solar system, or is it just Earth specifically? Because uh, if we just can, if we just limit us to two Terran worlds, then we're totally not gonna survive for long. Worlds will be independent, there will be no more give and take. Terra can become a world of its own. 
It won't be connected to Earth anymore, therefore no more immigration that will solve all of Terra's problems. Death will be permanent, Terra will be free. It won't exist solely to hold energy, you can give citizens true freedom. There's so much to take in, I have to stop and think. So Nagi ended up destroying the entire Federation, but it was suffering, so he saw his mercy. Now he wants to see who created this universe. The only way he can break out is with all of our power. The universe held in blades and my energy. But he's offering to leave Earth and Terra unharmed, only if I can give up all of Ezequiz's ideals. I mean, once he has that power, he can do whatever he wants. He might not even be telling the truth about that. I've seen a life on Terra, though. It's not good. I mean, it's just... So that's in the medieval era. It just needs to advance. What's the rest of the universe truly that bad? Will I really be releasing as much suffering as he said? It seems now that this is a battle of pure ideals. On one hand, I can guarantee Earth and Terra's safety. It's not really guaranteed because we don't know if we can trust this guy. If we close ourselves off, there'd be no risk at all. A connected universe was risky, but the reward great. It also give us an opportunity to advance. That's what I'm saying is if you're having an energy problem, you could just go back to medieval living. It would suck, but you could. But again, there's no real reason for an energy problem. Solar solar energy is unlimited, unless we're at like literally like the end of the universe where like all the stars are dead. But even then, there's black holes. There's no way I can decide this on my own. I have to defeat Nagi to connect the universe. Otherwise, we'd admit the feet of our own and hide. We'd live quietly, never knowing what we could have done. I can see Nagi tremble with unease. I think he expected me to give in to his speech, but there's so many voices in my head I can't. It's too unclear, too cloudy to pass judgment. I understand what's going on. The souls inside are conflicted once more. I don't know what action I can take, right? I don't tell him I'm sorry. I need lots of time to think about this. Doesn't need to come to that exodus. I have a better way to decide everything. Are you just going to kill, kill me? The way I let our true selves decide. Turns his back to me and returns to the terminal. I see him typing away at it much harder than before. You know, his back's to you. This is the time to attack, by the way. I sense that he's trying to hide some frustration. Do you really expect to convince me so easily? After a while, he turns back towards me. The ship starts to move, pushing me back violently. I almost fall down, but grab onto a terminal. As this happens, Nagi gives me an evil smirk. I've learned one thing during our harvest. People are most open before their deaths. That's when we put things in perspective. You can learn a lot about another person, especially with a blade to their neck, so tell me, what do you truly want? First is this blade and holds it out towards me. I instinctively do the same in turn, facing him. Chip is moving our destination unknown to me, probably towards the sun or something. Nagi keeps that evil grin on his face, ready to kill. Our destination is Terra, a crash course. In fact, we'll hit the castle directly. Well, it will obliterate everything. With the blade, speak of your resolve. If you can defeat me, then very well. You'll make Father's dream a reality. If you don't defeat me in time, we'll crash and you'll die. Then I can use your power for myself. Lunge towards me and attempts to strike me down. I met his sword halfway, both of Locking both of us in place. I gaze into his eyes and it seems we're of equal strength. The blades stay in deadlock, not choosing sides. Yeah, I get out of the bind, brother. There's a part of me that wants to defeat him. In a text this desire, the gear on my blade starts to spin. It gives me extra strength and I finally overpower him, but he dodges with ease, moving to the side. After a moment, he attacks once more in full force. I brace myself, holding out my blade in defense. Swords clash, a white light flashes before us. Likely this is a reaction to my spinning gear. Oh no, the energy is escaping. These braids were not meant to clash. Exodus, tame your gear immediately. I don't listen to him and I attack again. I need this boost if I wanted to win. White light flashes as they clash another time, but when it fades, I notice new stars listening. A celestial light slowly being born from the blade. World's long since harvested, finding new life. It's not how it would work because by his own admission, these worlds are millions of light years away, so the light wouldn't be reaching us yet, even if they, even if the stars were reborn. Which, by the way, this is they actually destroyed stars, not just planets. Sorry, I'm a, I'm a sci-fi nerd, so that kind of stuff. I overthink it. Don't be foolish, you'll undo all of our work. Neither of us can achieve anything. It starts to take a defensive stance. I was afraid one of, He was afraid one of our swords connecting further. He dodges my attack smoothly, and with ease, I never thought such a man would display grace. I me which to stop the gear, but I don't. Now that I've tasted his power, it's all I need. Perhaps this is what Nagi felt as he used it as well. He continues to evade, so I'll need to switch things up. Flames start to engulf with the windows of the bridge. He must be raking into the Terran atmosphere. Ship shakes. It could use this turbulence. Perhaps I'll be able to throw him off guard. And a few minutes left, Exodus. I can dodge whatever you throw at me. There's no way you can win anymore. Can I freeze time real quick? His baiting words 
and I attack full force, but this time I do my best to trick him. In the middle of the slash, I lose my balance. He thinks he's shaking. He thinks the shaking of the ship overtook me. He is the one who got caught off guard. He tries using my momentary confusion to attack me, but like he did before, I dodge him with ease. I turn around and drive the sword through his back. Hope you have enough beer in your fridge for that dot dot dot. Oh, the back to back slow dot dot dot. All right, so for that, um, you're gonna have to go to the nearest tavern and buy everyone there a round of drinks. The out a grunt and falls to his knees. He remains there, panting heavily. The floor fills with his blood, pitch black. He bows his head down as if admitting defeat. Take a few steps back. My blade left inside him. Full of blood on the floor glows in size. I watched in awe, expecting him to pass out. Congratulations, Exodus. You've done it. Proven how stupid you truly are. Laughs as he rises his feet. It was all an act. He reaches behind himself and pulls out my blade. Now he has both swords and he wasn't even hurt. For a moment, I regret underestimating him. Why would we do step away from our sword? Come on. We aren't so quick to hurt, Exodus. We're both born from world stones. I'm surprised you thought it was over. But now I hold both blades. Infinite power curses through my veins. There's nothing you can cope hope to win this. He walks towards me and I retreat in fright, but eventually my back hits the wall. This is exactly like the ballroom incident. Look around in panic, trying to find a way out. No one can save you now. In fact, why should I even wait? I can leash your power right now. A few more steps and he's right in front of me. I know there's no use trying to run. I tried the same thing when Indiaman died, but this time I couldn't get sent back by Ryu. But Akira. I often wonder if there is an afterlife. On the off chance that there is, give Father my regards when you see him. With that, he places both blades inside of me. I screamed as I'm pinned to the wall of the terminus. My vision falters, I look out the bridge window, the Terran surface grows bigger with each second. That's the world that wanted your help, you could have saved them, you know. I give you a perfectly valid option, but instead you chose to fight me. Well, I didn't get a choice. That uh, is what I would have picked, though, so. You chose a battle you know you'd lose, and they will all suffer for it. Look at those beautiful forests, Exodus, it's the last time you'll ever see them, or any Terran for that matter. Souls will continue to travel here, but they'll find only hell, engulfed in fire, burning for eternity. Not sure that's how it work. Pushes the blades deeper and makes the gear spin. I can feel my essence drain faster than ever before. He was right. I could have agreed with him back then. My last moments will be alive will be full of regret. My pigeon slowly starts to fade. Seems to activate our power at the last second. At the moment of impact, he'd leave this universe. I'd die and everyone in Terra would suffer forever. Dot dot dot, maybe? And hit us with a dot dot dot? Just like the ballroom, it wasn't over yet. However, instead of fear, these events bring hope. Not so fast, Nagi. He turns to address the intruder. He's caught off guard as if they've never met, but it's good to see a familiar face after all this. Part of me knows exactly what will happen next. Acheron, do it now. <laughs> well, Nagi is confused. I think they could have done this a few moments before. It might have been better. While Nagi is confused, Ryo makes his move. He dashes towards me, pulls out one of the swords, and returns to the center of the bridge, smirking. Points the blade at Nagi, completely determined. So we finally meet. Veliquiz's creations together at last. He sure screwed up the first time around. You're the other one, then? You foiled my plans in the ballroom? Brother, do you have a death wish? Brother! Nagi turns to me and tries to take the second blade before he can get to me. He's stopped. Akron! Going somewhere? Akron quickly removes the other blade. I fall to the ground and follow my own blood, but they both have swords free to kill Nagi. They stand there, pulling both toward them. You two, explain yourselves. I demand you tell me what's going on. Like you did to all the others you killed, don't make me laugh. You don't deserve it. Today we erase Scourge from the universe. Ryu lunges forward, stabbing Nagi straight through. The larger man stumbles, groaning in pain. Akron, listen to this. Destroy the cause of so much suffering. And give a brighter future to everyone. I've said it better myself. You know, I thought I won the battle, but now I know this is truly the end. He follows after Ryu and stabs Nagi as well. They both look at each other and give a firm nod. They activate the gears and Nagi screams in agony. You fools, you can't defeat me. I'm the embodiment of death. That he was. A force more powerful than anything. Acheron simply laughs. I am the embodiment of life. For the first time it has prevailed, a new force will govern the universe. White life engulfs everything I can't see. 
I can feel energy and then a lack of it, almost as if Nagi was now part of their blades. And they truly defeated the man who created Earth. Bring myself to my feet and my knees tremble. I call out to Ryu and Akron, hoping they're still alive. Perhaps their energy was put into the blades as well. Then the light subsides, and I see that it's not the case. They both turn and face me, wearing huge smiles. They both had teamed up and done the unthinkable. They destroyed Nagi and did his twisted journey. It's not over yet, Lance O'Neill. It's time to unleash your power. Akron, just like we practice. They turn and both point both swords at me, but I sense no hostility within them. It's finally time to bring this to an end. I live out the purpose I was created for. I'll do this for everyone's freedom. No one will get stuck in a cycle of despair. Stabs me with his blade, and I feel a surge of power. I'll do this for everyone's happiness. No longer will death triumph over life. I grow up out of suit, plunging the sword within me. I'll help. Here with the ability to change history, will bring out a hopeful future. Akron, alright, you land so nice, we believe in you. Push the blades in deeper, but it doesn't hurt. So I feel power like I've never felt before. It's time to change history and make things better. I look deep inside, finding out how much power I had. With all of it, I'd create the best possible reality, but how much power did I have and what could I do? It was a culmination of every action I ever took. All of your choices have led to this. I only have clothes off, earth, and tear. Only one. <laughs> Guessing that means we didn't get the true ending. I could feel the power within me, but it wasn't enough, at least not enough to achieve Veliquez's goal. Perhaps it was because I unleashed while I fought, or perhaps I just didn't have enough to begin with. However, I wouldn't deny the request. I could still change reality for the better. Nagi wasn't too far off with his idea. In fact, it followed after Lord Player's ideals. I nod at them as they plead for a better reality. The gears spin and everything fades to white. Close my eyes, embracing what's to come. I knew that my journey had finally come to an end. I also knew I'd never open my eyes again. But when they did, they'd see a future that I'd created. A future built on the foundation of loss and suffering. A future that I could never experience that again. I didn't have enough power to bring back the dead. But it shaped reality that could bring everyone joy. They would never know the truth of what happened. The same lost souls made this dream a reality. I'd be among them as I knew the truth. My sacrifice and suspension mean I'd be forgotten. Epilogue. It's a pretty bad ending, unless there's going to be something after the epilogue that's a little better. Uh, so I do not have the energy to play it through again to try to get the proper ending. At least not in recording. Just reading everything. It's killing my throat, man. After everything subsides, riding PB head home, but only the raised ruins of the tavern greet them. It won't be long until they notice what happened. Immigration subsided, Terra would get no more visitors. Righty, I can't believe this. It's almost like I was never even here. I'm sorry, you're right about that woman. No need to apologize, PB. I have a feeling her reign is over. No one will have to suffer like this again. PB takes slow steps through the rubble of his home. He kneels down and picks up some broken glass. Still a little hard to believe. She destroyed almost everything inside? PB laughs as streams, tears stream down his face. He holds a piece of glass close to his heart. No, not everything, Righty. The sun is fidgets doing. Only he could be this clumsy. Right, he preaches P approaches PB, expecting the broken glass, to share a laugh, finding a memory, momentary happiness. Now he's wiped from the annals of history that day. Only Nami remained known for what she had done. But so too would the child of Exodus be forgotten. The citizens of Terra Fink Veliquez instead, the immortal king's reign had indeed come to an end, but he left in his wake a world of joy for all. It didn't take too long to rebuild. I mean, I did the first time I was around. I'm a lot bigger than I was back then. Now, I'd say there's no need, Ratty. It's time to turn another page. Perhaps I can finally move on now. They stand together in the rubble of their home. PB was right. They had to bring about change. In that moment, Ride sets his eye upon the throne. But PB sets his eyes far, far away into the unknown. Velika was gone. Terra was in disarray. Ray immediately ventured into the castle. Amongst his findings was Veliquez's journal. It chronicled his life ending in one decree. Wait, say that again, Dusk. I may not have heard correct. As a democracy, I'm guessing. <laughs> Afraid you did, my lord. I feel like it's time to move elsewhere. But don't worry, I won't be out of reach. Veliquez wished for Ray to be his successor. Oh, okay. 
A lot of responsibility, but he accepted it eagerly. He had always had his expectations with Veliquez's rule, but now it was time to lead Terra in another direction. The decree may have been dated from their past. Rydie and Veliquez used to be great friends, but a royal decree must always be honored, and so Terra found its second king. A change in power brought about other changes, including the departure of Dusk, Veliquez's advisor. Rydie's rule would be different in so many ways. Not to say I'm a little shocked, but not everything can stay the same. I wish you all the best. I truly do. It means more than you know, my lord. Please accept my peaceful resignation, and may your reign be ever prosperous. I was before leaving the throne room. It was the final time you'd set foot inside. That seemed almost kind of random, like those events. Dust wasn't the only man who felt it was time to leave. There were others who didn't fit into Rydie's rule. However, this gave them the opportunity to grow. So what, you're just leaving for good? PB isn't that kind of a hasty decision? I feel like I've always wanted to, but I've had things tying me down, you know? Actually, when you say it like that, I know exactly what you're talking about. Do you have any idea where you're going? Not really, but that's the glory of it. There's so much uncharted territory here. Lots to see and even more to map out. You're a cartographer? How hard can it be? I taught Fidget how to draw, you know? Look how that turned out. Ouch, dude. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? Nothing calm down, little guy. It's just maybe you could use some help. I'm not sure what I do should do next either. Does that sound like something we could do? You might need some second opinions. At least someone who can protect you. Yeah, but I don't have any money, so don't come expecting a huge paycheck. That's okay. It's not money I want anymore. Besides, maps could help the future generations. I'd love to be tied to something like that. Very well. I want to leave tomorrow. Do you think you could be up super early? Yeah, I can do that. Conrad lets out a sigh at this decision. Wait, what's so funny now? Nothing. It's just kind of interesting. We'll be really be Wayfarers now. Wayfarers Tavern. Uh, while some left Rydie's side, others flocked to it. He created a network of trusted friends by his side. This way, he knew that he could trust those around him. Wait, could you say that again? I want you to be my advisor, Kaelin. We've been through thick and thin. I know I can trust you with anything. Besides, I know how strong you are. You protect me, and I'll protect you. No one can survive alone on Terra. Royal advisor, huh? Can you put up with my attitude? Honestly, I find it endearing. Good to after a long day of work. You tell it like it is, Kaelin. That's something I need. Well, when you put it like that, I don't think anyone... I don't think I could turn you down. Do I get my own wing of the castle? Why do you laugh and shakes his head at Kaelin? I don't even get my own wing. Just let this... Just this little room here. But honestly, it's all I need. Alright, then which throne is mine? <laughs> now there's something we can negotiate. Which would you like, my friend? The structure of the Terran royalty continued to change. While many left the castle, others arrived, but no matter what, they all had one thing in common. They are all taking life in a new direction. Uh, I guess that's all of it. I thought I'd never leave to see, live to see this day. The Immortal King sounded rather fatal, final. No one is, really is Immortal Dusk. It's always some sort of catch. So it's just his time to go, that's all. Guess you're right, Sam. And now it's our time to go. Do you think you can carry that? It's just a box. All right, all right. Just don't want you carrying too much. At least you're sure you know where we're going. Please stop calling me Dust. You may have been my boss, but not anymore. You left the king. I'm just helping. Sam walks away carrying Dust's belongings, but as she leaves, someone else enters. Confused look on her face as she sees the king. The king. Did I read that wrong? <laughs> oh, hello there. Can you help me? I'm looking for the throne room. Know where that might be? Ma'am, you asked the perfect man. That place was like a second home to me. Up the stairs through the double doors. I ask what you're here for? Well, I used to work at the Wayfair, but it's definitely out of commission. Righty called me here to help out. It's awfully nice of him, but Laquez wasn't always so generous. Righty sounds like a fine ruler. Oh, absolutely. I've known him forever. Terror will change for the better. Change it did. Rady went on to be loved by all Terrans. His rule was just and allowed freedom. The people were no longer subject to aged ideals. With the economy stable, he looked like he looked to expansion. Fair spread, and many cities and towns were founded. All of these were able to gather autonomously. Elected masters ruled them and reported to Rady. Within reason, they could give in to people's desires. 
After several years, Lord Player returned. He reported that he was a new man ready to atone. No longer under Riley's grasp, he ran for office. In the end, he was elected Ambassador of Riley. His dream of closed-off terror had finally come true. Immigration no longer played his beautiful world. The population became more stable, free of famine. Riley became a happy Hamlet, and Player became loved. Sam. Desk and Sam ended up as work partners once more. Finding, founding an academy, they taught children their history. They deserve to know more about Terra's past, more importantly, the lesson of the Immortal King. Can be started an infinite cycle of knowledge. When they died, their children, the children would take their place. They'd pass this knowledge down and it would repeat. This ensured no one would ever forget the past. Chris had no choice but to leave the Wayfarer behind. Both PB and Fidget were no longer in the picture. Accepting Riley's offer, she worked in the castle. The rest of her life was spent perfecting her art. Over the course of several years, she did. Terrans would travel far to taste her concoctions. She bought an influx of tourism to Riley's castle. But unlike Veliquez, his gates were always open. Riley ruled over Terra for a long time, but if Veliquez didn't rule forever, then neither could he. One fateful night, he passed away peacefully in slumber, leaving behind an expanded and fully united Terra. He was remembered as the greatest ruler they ever had. People traveled the rule world all over to pay him respects. Thus, in Sam's academy, had a new lesson to teach: the story of how Terra truly became a paradise. It was decreed that Kalen rule in his stead, assuming kin kingship. He had assured Riley's legacy lived on. He would keep Terra connected and united for eternity. His job was to maintain what Riley worked to create. How far in the future are we going to go here? Like we still haven't covered what happened on Earth. One day, PB finally returned from his journey. He carried maps depicting every corner of Terra, he named his discoveries after his fallen comrades, and gave Caelan new ideas for continued expansion. He was older and more grizzled than before. Conrad didn't return, and he was silent on this matter, but skills of the assassins were imparted to him. Becoming Caelan's advisor, they ruled into old age. Expansion continued and spread around the world. Velquiz would have been proud of his new Terra. It was all connected, but on a much smaller scale, and it flourished for the rest of its existence. Please, my voice, it's very sick. And the runtime. YouTube's not going to like the runtime. Earth, however, remained unchanged. After exiting the bunker, everyone regrouped. Came back to Tokyo, they continued their plans. The world tour and the memorial would go on. <sighs> Sinjin and Umi returned to the convention center. It was a big ordeal, but they couldn't lose time. The launch of the world tour still needs to happen. In fact, Daz and Chalk would be pushing overtime. Tinge, are you sure we'll be okay? I don't want to be scared anymore. I've been having nightmares lately. Anyway, everything will be fine. I'm sorry for lying to everyone, but Akira and I had a plan all along. He knew it was Max. Yes, Akira told me a long time ago. I'm sorry things had to be like this, but otherwise all of us would be dead. I think I understand. If not, you will someday. You can't always win unconditionally. There will always be losses in the road of life. I just didn't wish it didn't have to be. Trust me, I feel the same way. It will take a long, take a lot to push through this. I can't even imagine what Daz is feeling. That's all because of Maxine Armstrong. I heard some say they'd execute her. She possibly is, probably deserves that, right, Tinge? Can't say for sure, Numi. The world doles out justice in strange ways. You can see that after all this happened. I guess, but you know what they say. The punishment should fit the crime. While some wanted vengeance, others wanted remembrance. To honor the fallen instead of avenging them, Daz and Chalk put all their heart into rehearsals. It'd be their one chance to shine on their own. Not so sure about these lyrics, Daz. They seem a little sappy to you. I'll be yours. What's up with that? Remember, it's a memorial shock. It's not for us. Other people will find meaning in them. We just have to sing them with emotion. Besides, my solo isn't any better. You're calling our duet sappy? Wait until you hear my performance. I'll take your word for it. I'm, I'm really starting to feel the pressure. So many people will be here for Clays. This isn't about Clays. It never was. We're singing for every single loss. Past, present, and future shock. We'll tap into everyone's emotion. Evoke memories deep inside of them. Memories they may have forgotten. I guess you're right, but I'm still singing for Rocker and Clays. Maybe some people in my past. To that end, I don't want to screw up. If they're watching. I want them to be happy. They deserve a smile through all of this. You said the lyrics for Sappy, you should hear yourself right now, Shock. Dot dot dot, by the way. He chuckles and they go to share a laugh. They practice deep into the night for their big duet. That would be the start of the rest of their careers. 
What happened tonight would dictate their futures. Rule became curious of the happenings in Tokyo. Murders, explosions, arrests. It was interesting. Luckily, a local expert had all this covered. Komodo here, live from Tokyo. What a turn of events we have, folks. Instead of protecting us, she killed. That's right, Maxine Armstrong. Reported on her arrival just the other day. It turns out she had sinister intentions. Her reign of terror is at an end. I have exclusive news for all of you. Last night, she was arrested. Like the scene out of a movie, I swear, citizens coordinated her confession. After that, police does her justice. It wasn't just any citizens. Her name were Sinjin Acheron. One of them was Max's brother. The other was Clay's tour manager. Both directly affected by her killings, that's why I call poetry people. But her reach extended far further. How did her How many people did her actions affect? How far would these ripples spread? I don't think we'll ever truly know. I'm actually starting to run out of time. I think I have a stream to do here soon. While Rook survived, he followed his calling elsewhere. This left Jay and Sinj alone to plan the world tour. Though he'd be sending in though he'd be in attendance, he wouldn't be involved. To that end, the two remainders Plot their next action. Could have picked much better timing. There's much to do in just one day. Do you think we'll be ready tomorrow night? Wouldn't be the first time, Jade. Life takes us in many directions. It wouldn't be long of us to impede. It'd be wrong of us to impede Rook. Besides, he always wanted to help you, Claire. He was open about that when I hired him. He's just pursuing what he calls his dream. Yeah, you're right. Sorry for being a downer about it. It's just a big change to get used to. I mean, the minute that has happened lately, this trip has taken a soul on all of us. Hope to relax and enjoy the show tomorrow. It probably won't be the case. There's always something, you know. A manager's work is never over. Jay smiles and laughs. Unless he delegates it to his assistant. I'm always here to help, you know that. You should go and enjoy the concert, Singe. Do that for me, Jade. I wouldn't be able to thank you enough. So I never get to enjoy these things properly. Absolutely. Whatever you need. You always have my undivided attention. I'll fully devote myself to your cause. New barns were forged, old ones were rekindled. A large lineup gathered at the doors of Cafe Chat. Rumors spread of Rook's return, the famous male host. That and the revival of Akihabara's host. Hey there, welcome to the Cafe Chat. Is there anything I can do for you today? Oh, you want to make some reservations? Just a moment. There turns to the side and calls out for Rook. With him back in the picture, everything was easy. She truly missed the days when they worked together. Now that they were back, she was full of joy. Oh, more reservations, you say? Unfortunately, we're booked up for months. Can we set up a date that works for you? Rook hands the customer his tablet, displayed on it as all the reservations. The customer quickly points out that tomorrow is empty. They have high hopes for a booking a session. Fortunately, we have a concert to attend. I wish we could fit you in, but we can't. You'll have to look at a date in the future. The customer sighs and gives up, but they don't want to leave empty-handed. They pass their phone to a friend and step forward. They want a picture with the famous star couple. Oh, a picture? I'm not very good at those, I'm afraid, but I'll do it if Rook does all right. Nook nods and they all gather together, but before the picture is taken, the customer moves. He clearly is confused and realizes what's going on. The photo is taken. Rook gets down on one knee. Yes. There's so much on her mind that she forgot. Today was the anniversary of when, she saved, of when he saved the cafe. But as she looked down at him, his eyes glistened. He wanted to make today the, hap the anniversary of even more. Oh, That's cute. But also, I'd like to... I got things to do. Everyone had been building up to this moment. Not everyone was here, but they were together in heart, and Zayn anticipated as their debut loomed ahead. It was one more line ahead of them than anyone knew. Daz, I don't know about this. This must be what they call a stage fright. Any chance that you can handle it on your own? No way if you run, I'm coming too. But we've gone too far to turn back now. They don't deserve an empty stage. Remember what we're doing here tonight. A performance for all of Tokyo. A memorial for the midnight deaths. A launch of your career as well. There's much more pressure on you. Thanks for reminding me. Anyway, are you all prepared? I'm still worried about my piano work. There's a few tricky chords in there. Worry about singing in general. I've only ever provided backup vocals. They expect me to lead our duet tonight. You have a beautiful voice shock. It's time we both step into the spotlight and just do it like we rehearsed. It was great. Outside, the crowd buzzes in anticipation. They've waited a long time for this day. Of course, it wasn't the concert they expected, but they gained joy from this newfound purpose. This joy made its way back to the shock and Daz. The anxiety within them slowly withered away. It was time to be proud and honor the fallen. Tonight, they were heralds of Tokyo's morning. Got a stream to do here, boy. They stepped out and the audience remained silent. They didn't applaud out of respect for the theme. It was a somber moment, a moment of quiet remembrance. One last aria for those souls to fade away to.
They're actually going to be... After a memorial concert, they made it a big time. They traveled for years, entertaining the whole world. Shock took up the philanthropic work when he had spare time. Daz, however, had always poured her heart into performing. And in the end, she easily surpassed Cleese's popularity. But she never forgot the man who gave her this chance. I'm worried that this might be copyright music. Okamudu's reporting turned many heads overseas. He was recognized for his coverage of Kurofio's crisis. An international corporation handed him a job offer. Leaving Tokyo, he moved to America to pursue his dream. He became a, a reporter for known for his honor and integrity. Never again would he resort to tabloid journalism. Sinji managed to idols for the rest of his days. He loved the work and devoted his life to it, all while becoming father to the young Anumi. As he grew old, he needed to plan for the future. He ended up teaching his son the business works. When old age took on, Anumi was given full control. His days were spent honoring the legacy his father left. Cafe Chat quickly skyrocketed in popularity. Everyone heard that the star couple had returned. Rook and Eclair made a fortune off their services, but in this industry they needed youth and vigor. As they aged, they trained others to take their place. The company was left in good hands when they retired, however, they often come back for the experience. Even they couldn't resist the legacy they created. Speedrunning the text now. They and Sinj grew closer over the years together, a relationship formed where no one expected it. Each took a burden from another with joy. They committed themselves to each other and worked. That commitment has lasted the rest of their lives. In the end, they left the world with no regrets. Speedrun. Rock and Daz left many chart topping hits. Rather than fighting over the spotlight, they did duets. They are true stars, loved by the people, interacting with fans with their greatest passion. But their careers came to an end with their old age. Settling down together, they focused on Chalk's work. Together, they found several popular charities, their lives henceforth devoted to giving. Speedrun. <laughs> people are waiting for me right now. I don't know how, how do I saw all this, to be honest. As far as I know, I was supposed to be dead, but I smiled as of all the future I left behind. It seemed that in the end, everyone was happy. Except it's going to be a problem in a few hundred years when we can't expand to the stars. Like, I still don't understand, like, when they say, like, Earth and Terra, does, are they, like, different multiverses? And those entire universes are, like, uh, condensed? Or is it, like, specifically that planet? Because... <laughs> If I just trapped two worlds just as a singular planet, then it's like, oh, that's a pretty big problem. But if they do have their own separate universes, then it's probably fine. But yeah, we're out of time for this video. I have to get to a stream here really quickly. So uh, I'm not going to go over the credits. I'm sure some online. I apologize. But I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, remember to hit the like button. Keep the conversation going in the comments and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, I hope you have a good day. Should I realize I should keep recording because it's going about to, uh, Sam should pop up here soon in the credits, so I want to at least see that before I hop off. Sam belongs to Lance Elliot. Could have gone for her whole name there instead of just Sam, but thank you. Oh, it's a typo. It's got, I've got two T's, brother. For, uh, all right. I hope you have a good one, guys. There's after credits. Max sits alone in the courtyard of her prison. She instills a sense of fear in the other inmates, avoiding her. They call her insane and unstable. But after what happened, she knows the truth. The right to be scared, they know what I'm capable of. Rising to the food chain, top of the food chain will be easy. She lifts weights, grunting as she pushes her limits. With each rep, unpleasant memories return to her. Her loss to Acheron and Singe, and then her murder spree. She finds strength in this, but can't tell why. Does she still have her necklace, though? Eight, nine, what? Drops her weight to the side, panting heavily, but not because her set has reached its end. Instead, she drops it in a state of shock. She feels a familiar sensation and embraces herself. Uh oh back around going to detour. I don't feel like that was... Didn't seem like that was a prelude to a next chapter or something, because uh, when this game come out, 2014? 2016? Yeah, they haven't made another major minor. Uh, place had a falling out with uh, Posse Clausy, the artist, I think. So if they did do another one, they'd have to get, they'd have to get a new, whole new artist for it. I think. They might have patched things up since then. But, uh, looks like we're actually done now. So, see ya.